Hi there programmers, it is Mr. Baumgarten back at you with another Pi game video. Today we are going to add health and points to our game. So you will recall at the end of our last session we um, were walking around and we had solid walls and we had solid ceilings and we could land on the floor. All right, so that, yeah, that ceiling is stopping me from going through and yeah, we've got the, the walls there that I can't walk through and everything else. Uh, and you will see I have added coins to my map. So I went into my tiled map editor and found my coin icon. So I decided to go with gold coins. You can, there's gold, silver and bronze here. So you can use different values for them if you wish, want. Yeah. And um, so on the actual coin in your tiled map, sorry, in your tile sheet, you need to find your coins in here. Uh, so here's the gold coin, and I've given it a points value of one. So perhaps if you're gonna use bronze, give those one, silver two, gold three, or something like that. The other thing that I've gone and done is I've picked my lava and you can see I've given it a health rating of negative 10 and I've given water a health rating of negative 2. So uh, because I want both of them to hurt me, I want the lava to hurt me a lot more than the water uh, and uh, kill me a lot faster. So we are now going to implement these points and we're going to implement these health effects into our game. So I save my tile sheet Oops, sorry. Save, click the save button on your tile sheet. Come back into your map. Make sure it's properly uh, taking effect here. So you can see here, yes, points is one on my coins and on my lava. Uh, wherever my lava has gone, here it is. All right, we can see here that's got health negative 10 and the water is negative two. So I can come now into my pie game and get this up and running. So the first thing I'm gonna do is create a, a couple of variables to keep track of my health and my points. And I'm going to get those health and point num uh, numbers to display on the screen so the user knows how many points they've accrued and how healthy they are. So I'm gonna create uh, a couple of variables here. Let's just call it health. And I'm gonna work on percentages. So I start off with 100% uh, fully healthy and my points in my game I can set to zero when the, my game starts. I don't have any points yet. I have to accrue those as I go. Uh, I'm also gonna create a variable or an object for the font rendering system, uh, which is necessary to be able to display text inside Pygame. I'm just gonna use the Arial font. It's what, you know, we all have it on our computers. If you want to use a special font, feel free, but uh, it needs to be properly installed on your computer for this to work. So it's just pygame.font.sysfont, capital S on the sys, and then capital F on the font. And then open parentheses, open some quotes, and you put the name of the font as it appears on your computer. So th this might be a case of like opening up Word or something like that. And but you want, this needs to be an exact match for how it displays in Word when you're choosing fonts. Uh, and then you want to tell it what font size you want to give it, and then so I'm just gonna make it 18 size for now. Okay, so let's get these displaying on my screen. So I'm gonna scroll down to inside my game loop. All right, so here I'm resetting my screen, and then here I'm blitting all of my tiles. So right after that might be a good point to display on the screen how many points I've got and how much health I have. So this gets rendered into an image file. It, it takes the, the font, whatever text we give it, it, it uses the font to turn it into um, uh, an image, which we can then just blit onto the screen like any other image. So I'm just gonna create uh, a variable here or an object called points image and so I'll uh, the aerial object that I created has a dot render function. So uh, you can see it there, dot render. 
and inside this I just simply give it the string the text string that I want it to display so I'm going to use an f string because uh, I want the integer value inside it as well so I'm just going to say points and then insert whatever's inside that points variable into my f string a uh, couple more parameters I need I need to give it an anti-aliasing I normally just use one if, uh, the option is just zero or one you can pick whichever you want uh, and then you need to give it a color code so I'm just going to make mine white so 255 255 255 uh, and now I do the same for my health so health image aerial dot render uh, if you don't use an F string let me just show you how you do it the other way health um, you need to because the health and the points are integers right you can't just say um, add health to this because this has to be a string and we can't say here's a string and then add an integer to a string that doesn't make sense we need to turn this integer into a string so we have to use the str command if we're not going to use because the f string is nice it in that it automatically does those conversions for us um, whereas if we don't use an f string then we have to do that conversion manually so you'd have to put str around your integer name and then i'm just going to do one and 255 255 255 again Right, so that creates two images that I can now just blit onto my screen. So window dot blit, and so points image is the first one that I'm going to blit onto my screen, and I just need to give that a set of coordinates. So I'm going to come in from the x uh, 50 pixels from the left hand corner and come down y 10 pixels. So towards the top left corner of my screen, window dot blit for the health image one and I'm going to just display that un directly underneath the points one so you can obviously change these coordinates as you see fit uh, but I'll just show you what that does on mine so if I hit the play button now uh, I haven't quit the previous game there we go here we go and if I scroll this down there you go you can see I've got points equals zero health equals 100 so now we want to change these numbers and do something with them okay so collect points and I uh, have my health hurt me when I walk into a lava pit. So I am going to come down, let's close that, let's scroll down to my game logic section and insert a couple of lines here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I want to know what tile my player is kind of touching in, in the center of, of uh, my player's body. Uh, you know if I'm touching lava or if I'm touching a coin or something like that but we've got that standing on but that is the that's the tile that's at our feet right? and so that's what we're using we know that that's ground and so but the ground wouldn't be the one that wouldn't you know it's the tile that's going to be a, a few pixels above that would be the one that's got the coin or the lava or something like that so I'm going to create a different uh, one but I'm, I'm using this same principle here in fact I might even just copy this code copy and paste but instead of standing on I'm going to call it touching and I need to change my uh, values here so this is still the center point of uh, my horizontal uh, of my player because it's 25 pixels wide and I want the midpoint of the vertical of my player, which is 35 pixels high. So instead of 35, let's go for 17. That's around the midpoint, 17.5, but it's an integer, so you can't do the 0.5s. So this will now tell me the properties of whatever tile is kind of in the center point of uh, my player's body. And so you will recall we, we gave all of our tiles, if I pop back into the tile map editor, every tile has a health value and every tile has a points value and if it doesn't affect our points it's just zero and if it doesn't affect our health it's just zero so we can just take whatever that value is and add it to our existing health and points so health is simply going to be we take whatever is currently in our health and we're going to add to it the health the integer of the health value of whatever we 
whatever tile we're touching and do the same for points so let's uh, do that and now if I run it you should see that those numbers will change all right so if I if I run over some coins all right you can see that my points has gone up and that my health is going down as I'm in the lava pit all right so now we need the health to kill us once we hit reach zero or negative territory and we need the coins to disappear once we've collected them so that we don't just get infinite amount of money so let's make those couple of changes uh, and so to do this we need to know well the health one is fairly straightforward uh, we can just put here if my health goes less than zero then we are going to quit the game all right and so that's because we've got our loop running until we say quit uh, and later on we can you know put on a end of game screen that says you know sorry you died you know, and how did you go uh, and so now the lava pit should kill me pretty quickly all right and the game finishes and the water if I can get to the water uh, which, which, oh, it's <laughs> that's not and all right see so that's already knocked me down to 30 on my health and, but then the water will kill me but just not quite as quickly excellent oops uh, so now we need to do what we need to do with the coins though is we need them to disappear once we've touched it uh, and so I'm gonna come back up to my screen where I'm, my function that I created for getting the properties for my tile because this is what we're using to create that touching um, set of data and you can see here all the defaults that we have uh, I'm going to just to make things a little easier on us later on I'm going to we're going to add a couple of extra custom properties to the property set so rather than just returning everything that comes from the TMX data it'll be useful if our property set also tells us what our tile number is our, uh, uh, the x and y coordinates of our tile number uh, because we go to all this effort of calculating it um, but the properties themselves don't actually contain that information uh, and it'll make things easier to remove um, the coin once uh, if we know those values so I'm going to add here a couple of lines properties and I'm going to add an X property for the tiles uh, X coordinate and I'm going to add a Y property for the tiles Y coordinate and then what this will do you'll notice now when uh, when I run this So if I come over here to some coins, we can see here in the data that is printing out as we move around, we now have this X and this Y value. All right, so we've just added that. And so that's the X and the Y coordinate uh, within the tile map of whatever this particular tile is you know, at that location. Uh, or, yeah, or the location, you know, so the location here of the gold coin. Uh, and we also need to know this number here, the ID number for your different coins. Uh, so you can either get it from this printout if you've still got that happening, or you can get that from your tile, your maps. So if you come into your tile set and find your gold coin, you can see here it has an ID number of 408, which is the same number that my game is printing out and telling me the ID number is 408 so that is a u unique number that says I am touching a gold coin uh, every different tile has a different number so that no other type of tile except for gold coins will have ID 408 so what I'm going to do now is if my properties has this ID number okay not all the properties do I mean we could come back up here do, 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 where's that function uh, if we're going to do this because um, these are the defaults that we provide if there was no tile so maybe we you know we could just put in here ID and give it a default of say negative one so if if it doesn't exist 
um, that would also solve this problem. So maybe maybe we'll just do that. Uh, so if there's no tile, then the ID is negative one. So I've added that into my get tile properties. So now I know that it's safe to just look up an ID number and that every tile will have one. So back here in my game logic section, uh, I can now say if the touching, all right, so if the ID number of whatever I'm touching is 408, so in other words, it's a gold coin, then what do I want to do? I want to, I need to get that X and Y location. So that's why we were just adding it to that function. So I'm just going to say, let's make up a couple of variables. We'll do tile X is equal to the X value of um, this grid and this tile, and we'll get the tile Y as well. So what's the, what's the Y location where we're at within our map? And now I'm going to remove this particular tile, right? Because I've, I've added my points to it, from it, and I don't want to be able to get those points again. So TMX data uh, dot layers, and uh, we're still working in layer zero, so this might change later on. Uh, once we start incorporating multiple layers, I might have to put a variable there instead of zero. Uh, but then we use a dot data and we need to provide the y the y coordinate for the row and then the x coordinate for the column so tile y and then square brackets the second time tile x and this will this will this will be a a special id number with within the tmx data of what the, the tile is at at that location now it's not actually the 408 number, it's a different number which is kept internally within TMX data, uh, within the PyTMX that it generates. But if we set this to zero, then that removes the tile th at that location. So I can now come back into here and run my code and we'll see that after I touch a gold coin, it will disappear. And so I can't collect it a second time. Uh, I keep walking over those same spots and my points doesn't go back up. If I come down where there are new tiles, uh, we really need some tile collection sound effects happening here. It would start making our game, whoops, <laughs> I died. <laughs> it would start making our, our game a lot better and don't you worry, we will be doing sound effects, absolutely. All right, whoops, and I missed those tiles and I need to be able to walk up my ladder. That'll be a second video. Uh, but yeah, so I can now run through here collect all my coins and uh, yeah have the water and the lava kill me see how many coins you can collect and uh, yeah this is Mr. Baumgarten signing out <laughs>